Welcome back, everybody. This is the Monad mini-series, and yes, we have made it to Monads. So far in this series, we've introduced functors, so we know what functors are. We introduced pointed functors, which allowed us to make instances of our functors. And in the last video, we saw why functors can be useful by implementing our own version of the maybe functor. But the problem that we ran into was sometimes we realized that we would actually want to take a value in a context, so inside of a functor, in this case a maybe, which becomes a just, and then pass it into another functor, so another instance of maybe. And the problem is that we would end up with nested functors. And that meant that it would break the rest of our code because those functions only knew how to go one level deep inside of the functor. So let me just clear my console. And if I were to run this, then we end up with just that has a value property that is an object, which means it's another functor that we have accidentally put onto the value property. So we need some way of flattening those values out as we go so that we don't end up with nesting. Now, this setup worked well to explain why that was valuable at the end of the last video, but we're actually going to clean this up a little bit. So we'll get rid of that line, put log back in here, and we actually don't need these duplicate maps. We don't need to map each part of the composition. We can just write the composition and then map over the entire thing. So I can just map over transform. And that will do the exact same thing. So now we should have our regular values, which are nothing. And if I pass in 5, just 7, because we have mapped over transform, which adds 1 and adds 1. Perfect. And now it makes it really easy to create some nesting. So if instead of going from value to value, so from number to number, if we went from value to value in context, so from number to a just number, for example, then we would end up with some nesting. And so now we end up with that just that points at another functor on its value property. And so we need some way of fixing that. And we can fix that by adding a new function to our arsenal called mjoin. And what it will do is go one level deep inside of the nesting and give us that value. So that if we have a functor inside of a functor, we just get one functor back. So let's implement that up here. I'm going to start with just. So mjoin is going to be a function. And since all of our values are located on the values property, and we want to go one level deep, we can just return this dot value. And it will give us that functor that's inside of the functor. And that will be the exact same for maybe. And the reason I did those two first is because nothing doesn't actually end up doing any nesting, because it is always just nothing. So mjoin for nothing is going to be a function that simply returns a new instance of nothing. That's pretty easy. And now that gives us everything we need to deal with this nesting that's occurring. So if we just drop our mjoin in there, and then we run our program, oh, I forgot to make mjoin into a function. So right now it's just methods. Uh, everybody else probably <laughs> realized that. Uh, I have to reg it just like we did for our map, our log, everything else. I have to create a version of it for mjoin. And we've been calling this argument context, so I'll continue to follow that standard. And we'll just do return context dot mjoin and execute it. And there we go. Now if I run this, we end up with just seven. So it's working. It's dealing with our nesting just fine. And that means that we can actually put these back to back. Oops. So we could have a map, which is going to create another functor inside of a functor. mjoin is going to remove one of those functors, so that we just have a functor with a value. And then we'll map, which will create another functor within a functor. And then we'll mjoin, which will remove one of those functors, so we just have a functor with a value. And then we'll log it. 
And so if we run this, then we get just 9. So it's working perfectly. But we'll notice that there's this pattern, mjoin map, or in the order of operation, map then mjoin. Map takes the function, returns a nested functor, and then mjoin removes that nesting. So let's make a new function that is at the heart of what makes a monad. And in JavaScript, it's usually called chain. And it takes a function, and it returns the composition of mjoin and map with the function passed in. Because you'll see that matches our pattern perfectly up here. We have a function, in this case transform, and we pass map, we pass it into map, and then we mjoin. So if we just replace those two calls with chain, and we do the same thing here, then we end up with the exact same behavior. And so this is now a monad. That's all we had to do. We have mjoin, which allows us to define chain because we have map and we have mjoin, so that gives us an implementation of chain, which simply works with values that take, or sorry, works with functions that take values and return values in context. The actual type signature is that chain is going to deal with a monad of any type, or in this case it would be a specific type, a number, but you can think of A as just being a type, and then a function that goes from that type to a monad of another type, or a transformed version of that type in this case, so an incremented number, and then it's going to return a monad of that transformed type. And so that's exactly what we're doing here. We have a just value that is returned from our transformation, and then it's passed into the second transformation. That transformation is going to take, for example, in this case, a just of seven. It's going to add one to it to make it six, or sorry, to make it eight, to make it eight and it's going to add one to make it nine, and then it's going to wrap that in a just. So we now have a just of a just. And then because mjoin implements, or sorry, chain implements mjoin, we'll remove one of those justs and we end up with that transformed value, that value of 9, inside of the new context, which is a singly wrapped just value. So again, if we look at our console, we end up with just 9. It's exactly what we would, ex would expect. And while this is the normal way that I'm at least used to calling functions when you are composing them, this is not how it's often done in JavaScript. JavaScript does use a lot of methods. So let's implement the JavaScript-y way of doing it. And so that might look something like maybe.of, and then we'll use the exact same input. We'll use five. Chain and transform. Chain, transform, and then log. Now, we have not implemented chain as methods, so let's do that. We can go up here to nothing, and it'll be the exact same for every single one. Chain is just going to be a function, takes a function, and it's going to return uh, this.map with the function passed in, and then mjoined. And so let's add that up here as well, and add that to our maybe. And so now assuming that I haven't messed anything up, these two lines, 47 and 44, will do the exact same thing. Just 9 and just 9. And it actually make a bit more sense if I were to replace this 5 with input. So now let's do a quick little comparison. Because if you've been following up to this point, you understand functors. You see how easy it is to work with map. You understand that map lifts a function inside of a functor, and chain lifts something inside of a functor because it also uses map. And the only difference is that after mapping, it calls mjoin to flatten it. So if we didn't need to flatten it, if we removed our just, 
then we could replace all of our chains with maps. Replace this chain with a map and replace this chain with a map. And if I run this, now we end up with just nine and just nine. And of course, if we want to work with functions that are going to return values in context, we need to flatten them as we go. So we need to use chain, which is map with an M join. And we get the exact same thing. And that's the difference. So if you've heard people say functors are something that can be mapped, and monads are something that can be flat mapped, and it didn't really make sense to you, this should give you a really strong understanding of that comparison. Because you understand what mjoin is. You understand that functors are just containers. Actually, let's run through our, our little checklist. We, had, we started with a container that needed somewhere to store a value. We called that somewhere the property values, or the property value. Then we needed some way of applying a function to that value. We did that with map. Map was our bridge that lifted an outer func function that didn't know anything about the functor it was going to be working on into that functor so it could operate directly on the values. And we needed to return the values in that same context. And then in order to move on to pointed functors, we just added of. Of gave us an opportunity to instantiate our functor so that we could carry the logic across every instance of our functor. And then we just added mjoin. And mjoin allowed us to flatten nested uh, functors as we went. And that created our monad. And that's all it is. Now, <laughs> I shouldn't say that's all it is, because what this series has really been is an introduction to the concept of a monad, explaining why and how and a little bit of what on the basics of a monad so that you understand conceptually why they're useful, why people use them, and uh, how you could implement them yourself. And that they're really nothing scary. They're just another type of data, another way of working with a certain, uh, a cer work working with data with a set of behaviors. But if this whetted your appetite at all, and, or maybe you're one of the people sitting there freaking out about the fact that I didn't mention applicatives, or maybe you think that I forgot to mention applicatives, or the monad laws, or the functor laws, or proofs for map, any of those things, stay tuned because I will have a much deeper dive video series on monads. And I think the mistake I made in my first attempt was that I blended too many levels together. So this has been focused on introducing people to the concept of monads. If, that vid if this video did that, please give it a like. I do appreciate it. Share the video with anyone who you think it would help. Comment down below if you have any questions. If you have questions but you haven't watched the other videos, please watch the other videos first. But if you have watched those videos and you still have questions, reach out. I'd be happy to answer them. I really enjoy helping you guys, and you guys really do challenge me to make sure I understand this stuff before I put out these videos. So. I look forward to diving deeper in with monads in future videos, and I will see you in the next videos. Bye, everybody.